Hello, my name is Allison Gilchrist. I am a research scientist at NYU Langone Health, where I study vaccinology and immunology. Today, I had the pleasure of interviewing Dr. Barney Graham, who is the keynote speaker at our upcoming Keystone Symposium on Progress in Vaccines Development for Infectious Disease. How did previous research on coronaviruses and mRNA vaccines, um, you can focus on coronavirus structure if you wish, specifically prepare us for the SARS-CoV-2 vaccine development program? What was your expectation of timeline uh, to deploying the vaccine? And were you surprised by how quickly this happened? It was not easy to get the first coronavirus-like structure. Uh, it took uh, more than two years because trying it with the MERS and the original SARS-1 coronavirus spikes uh, was, it didn't work out. It, they were too unstable. We could never get a uniform structure. It wasn't until we turned to the to the uh, endemic coronavirus uh, HKU1 that we were able to finally get the structure. But once we had ways of stabilizing that, especially the two proline substitution at the top of the central helix, that same exact uh, substitution worked to stabilize the MERS and the original SARS and about a dozen other beta coronaviruses. And so uh, we had a generalizable approach that seemed to be working across the other members of the coronavirus family in hand uh, that was part of our pandemic preparedness uh, program. Now the RNA uh, is a different story because uh, we've been working with DNA vaccines for 30 years, uh, way back into the 90s. And, and a big part of the VRC program for HIV and other you know, viral diseases was to use DNA vaccines. And they had worked reasonably successfully, especially for uh, flaviviruses like the West Nile and then Zika. But in 2016, during the Zika outbreak, when we made a DNA vaccine that was reasonably good and went all the way into phase 2B trials, we also worked with other groups, including Moderna, who had made an RNA vaccine uh, that was uh, designed in a very similar way to our DNA vaccine, but it was much more potent. And, and it was also even faster, even more rapid to make RNA vaccines than it was to make DNA vaccines. And so that uh, capacity for chemical synthesis and rapid manufacturing combined with our uh, thinking that we had a generalizable approach for vaccine development, uh, you know, it was a... Uh, it was a strategic plan with Moderna to do pandemic preparedness demonstration project for both paramyxoviruses, where we also had another approach, and coronaviruses. And so for both the antigen design component and for the nucleic acid delivery component, um, this had involved a lot of work over many, many years. and. And then they all came together uh, right at the right time uh, at, at the beginning of 2020. Uh, because of these new tools that had emerged over the last 10 to 15 years with structure-based vaccine design, having an atomic level structure, knowing how to do protein engineering to hold the proteins in the right shape, there's new technologies now for displaying antigens on self-assembly nanoparticles. Uh, there's the capacity to do single cell analysis and that can be helpful for discovering new human monoclonal antibodies, but also for analyzing immune responses in much more detail, rapid sequencing. There's a number of new things that have happened over these last 10 or 15 years that really were transforming the way you could do uh, vaccinology. Uh, the NIAID uh, plan is really to, to have a look for generalizable approaches for interventions and medical countermeasures for all 26 viral families that infect humans. So we had started with paramyxoviruses and coronaviruses because we, we knew the most about them, but we really think this kind of work is, needs to be done for all the viral families. I think this pandemic has taught us uh, that we need to, to plan better, we need to be better organized and better prepared and better coordinated and with better communication 
not only within government agencies and between government and industry, but across uh, continents and across cultures and have a, a better global response to something like this that affects all of us.